Tonight, I'd like to read from uh, Matthew chapter 20, chapter 14, from verse uh, 22. So Matthew uh, 14, we'll read uh, a few verses, 10 verses here. Uh, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore thou didst, didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art a son of of God. Uh, four of us here, or probably more than four of us, maybe you guys did it too, uh, we say we sailed on the Sea of Galilee. We're on a similar boat as the boat here that was described, and uh, we are on the same lake. It's not a sea. Um, it's the lake, Lake of Galilee, Sea of Galilee, or Lake uh, Tiberias. Uh, this sea, or lake, is uh, about four times larger than Folsom Lake in terms of area. It's about 13 miles long and eight miles wide, and it's 700 feet below, below the sea level. And as Brother Pete mentioned, it's just as hot but, little, but more humid than here. So I was actually looking up the temperature around 101 to 105 this whole week, but the uh, humidity is around 36, 30, you know, 40%. Whereas here, humidity today was 14%, so quite a bit of difference. Uh, it's very hot and, and humid over there, uh, you know, much more humid than here. Um, but, you know, Jesus spent a lot of time in that neighborhood, in that part of the Sea of Galilee, uh, teaching. And um, the time of the year when this would have taken place most likely was on the, in the winter time when storms would come, uh, our guide kept saying, oh, it doesn't rain at all. It never rains here and during the summer. It's always sunny. It never rains. You know, he kept repeating that. But he says, when it rains, it pours like sheets of water. Uh, so, you know, that's the winter season when that, and being a storm, right, being this, a storm in the story, and comparing with other gospels is around the time of uh, winter for them, which, you know, is December to March time frame or so. This was around the time of the Passover, if we compare it to the Gospel of, uh, of John. Now, this, this event, the story here that we uh, are talking about tonight happened after the 5,000 men were fed. So this was on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, so, uh, which means um, where today is Golan Heights. Uh, it's still under Israel control. But uh, Capernaum was up north. We'll show you the picture hopefully later on in the map. Maybe you can, you know, if you get an idea, it's towards the northwest of the Sea of Galilee. The feeding of the 5,000 happened on the other side. And now Jesus sent his disciples back towards Capernaum, their home base. And uh, he went up in the mountain to pray. Uh, the Bible doesn't tell us that he did that many times, but no doubt that's how Jesus got his strength. Uh, is by praying and talking to the Father. And that's how we get our strength today too, by spending time in prayer with our Heavenly Father. He did that in a solitary place. Um, and then it says you're on the fourth watch. So the fourth watch was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Some of us were uh, awake during the fourth watch. 
um, early on in our trip because we were still in this time zone. So uh, some of us were awake. But anyway, Jesus was walking uh, on the water here uh, on that, during that time. Now, when you read the story or you hear it read, you know, what sticks out to you? You know, I was thinking about that. You know, what, what really sticks out to me? Because a lot of times we focus on um, the failure of Peter, right? Oh, he doubted and he started sinking. But really what sticks out to me is that Peter actually walked on water. He actually walked on water. The only, you know, man, right, besides Jesus, that, that ever did that, right? So it's something great that Peter did. I know we, uh, like I said, we focus on the end, and we'll, we'll come back here shortly, and we'll go start from the end. But Peter actually walked on water, and that's not a figurative, not a, not a figure of speech, but he actually did walk on water just like we walk on ground. Now, if you stop and really think for that, you know, you know, it's impossible. But he was with Jesus, and with Jesus around, everything is possible. And if I were to give a title to my message today, it was step out of the boat. Step out of the boat. That's, uh, that's where faith is showing, right? When we step out of the boat and God can give us the victory when we do that. Peter did that. He was the only one of the disciples that did that. None of the others did that, but Peter did. And uh, he got an experience for it that we talk about it today, 2,000 years later. No doubt he can tell that to his kids, his grandkids. Hey, I walked on water, right? He could tell that. Because he trusted God. He did something that nobody else did. And likewise, you and I can do something that maybe nobody else has done or receive an experience from God that we can tell others, you know, I, did, I received that from the Lord. Why? Because I believed God and I stepped out of the boat and uh, believed God and trusted him in what he had for me. So let's start uh, a little bit with the, you know, going with the end and back up. Now, what stopped Peter from continuing his walk on the water. What got to him, right? If we were to, to, to put one word to that, what stopped him, it was fear, right? Fear is what uh, stopped him short of continuing on to, to reach Jesus. When he uh, looked around, right? And that's, you know, we as people are sometimes prone to doing the same thing. Right, we look around instead of looking at Jesus, right? If he had kept his eyes on Jesus, uh, he would have continued on walking on water all the way till Jesus. But because he started looking around, no doubt it was windy, the sound, uh, the, you know, he saw with his eyes, possibly, or he saw the, the waves crashing around him, right? Uh, the, the sea was stormy and the winds were ominous, took his eyes off Jesus, and when he did that, you know, he... he he had fear in his heart, and he started sinking. That's what happens when we take our eyes off Jesus. We start sinking. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been and what you've done in the past. If, uh, if we start taking our eyes off Jesus, we're going to sink. That's, that's going to happen. And it happened to Peter, one of the great uh, apostles. He took his eyes off the Lord, and he started sinking. So we don't want to take our eyes off the Lord. It's easier said than done, but that's one of the reasons why we have services. That's one of the reasons why we have Bible studies and Sunday school. So we can be reminded to keep our eyes on the Lord, to keep our eyes on Him and to trust in Him, even when it's difficult around us, even when it's stormy and things are going uh, in, in our lives that we can't make sense of. But if we keep our eyes on the Lord, He'll be with us. He'll take us through the storm and we'll be all right with us. So let's keep that in mind and don't take our eyes off the Lord. We don't want to keep our eyes on the world, we'll sink. Right. Keep our eyes on the problems around us, around the cares around us, right? We'll sink, right? But we, we want to keep our eyes on the Lord and then we can uh, move on. Now, let's go back to the first part when he started walking. What did it take for Peter to start walking on water? Um, it definitely took courage. Actually, even Jesus says, be of good cheer. That word means be of good courage. Be of good courage. It's I. Don't be afraid. They saw him walking in that fourth watch early in the morning, and they, they thought it was a ghost, I guess, uh, or a spirit. And, 
and they were afraid, but Jesus says, no, no, it's me. Uh, it's everything is good. Be, be courageous, have courage, don't be afraid. It took some courage for Peter to say, if it's you, Lord, you know, bid me come to you. Right. It took courage to take that first step, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in Austria, we went to, the, to one of the, uh, to the cathedrals. They have, you know, cathedrals, uh, many cathedrals. There are many churches, too, and just like in Jerusalem. And we took it to the, uh, to the top of this cathedral, uh, St. Stephen's Cathedral. And uh, it wasn't very high, or maybe 150 feet or so high. But we're right there at the very edge. You know, there's a rail, and that, and, but we're right there at the very edge. You can see below. And I'm a little afraid of heights, maybe like some of you guys are, right? Um, and I can imagine maybe that's what Peter felt like when he looked on the edge of the boat. So, oh, it's fear. You know, it looks all the, it could be afraid, right? But he still had courage to take that step. He took that courage. He took, he took that first step uh, with courage. Uh, so it took courage. It also took faith that what Jesus called unto him, that he would be able to go there and, uh, and walk on water. Jesus was nearby. It's always good to know that Jesus is near, yes. right? Because we can trust in him and he will deliver us. We heard this morning that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We can take that promise each and every day of our lives. When you have questions, when you have doubts, when you're not sure of what's going on in your life, Jesus is near. He's right there with us. He'll, he'll, he'll watch over us. And if we put our trust in him, our hand in him, he'll take us through. So, yes, he had courage. He had faith. And also Jesus said, come. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, come to me. Right? Jesus is calling you today. He says, come to me. Come closer. Come and follow me. Yeah. Right? And whether you're saved or whether you've received your deeper experiences, we hear the same call. Jesus says, come to me, right? It wasn't uh, in the boat. Jesus was not in the boat. He was out there on the sea, on the turbulent sea, but he still said, come. That means even in this world, with all that's going around, Jesus still says, come, right? We can still follow him today in this turbulent, uh, you know, modern society. Jesus is the same yesterday, for today, forever. If we keep our eyes on him, it's going to be okay. Now, it's easier to stay in the boat, isn't it? It's easier to stay in the boat. And actually, the other disciples, the rest of the disciples did just that. They stayed in the boat. They stayed in a place that they felt was safer. Where is it safer? In the boat or with Jesus? Uh, right? To us as humans, at first, we might say, well, the boat, right? Then there's, I'm not on the water. It's safer in the boat. It's safer where I'm at. It's safer where I'm familiar. But where is it really safer? In the boat where it seems safe to us, or is it safer where Jesus is? Right? Or is it safer where the Lord says, come? Right? right? We need to answer that, this question for our lives oftentimes because uh, we might feel, oh, I'm in a safe spot right here, but Jesus says, come. Somewhere else where you're not, not in the place where you are, where is it safer? The safer is with Jesus. Right? Uh, so we want to we want to keep keep you know keep that in our mind as we go through life. When we uh, got saved, we took a step of faith. We stepped out of the boat, right? We we believed the promise of God that it, He would forgive us, that He would change our lives, change our hearts, and then would uh, make us a new creature. We took that step of faith. Whether we understood that at a time, but looking back, we can understand that we did that. We trusted God, and he didn't let us down. He didn't let us down. He made a change in our lives that is still going on today. He gave us something that doesn't wear out. Think about that for a second. You have your clothes on. They wear out. You know, um, Mirella bought me um, uh, a shirt 20 years ago. And I finally wore it in Israel. It still had its tag on it before, I, before we left. It was a linen shirt that she kept saying, oh, you should wear this and you should wear that. And you know, I never found the time, but I finally wore it 20 years later, right? 20 years. It still was new. But most of your clothes don't stay new for 20 years, right? They wear out, right? But the experience that God gives us doesn't wear out doesn't become less with time, but it becomes better with time, right? That's what Jesus does. 
I, uh, he's the one that, can, uh, that does that. He's the only one that can do that, right? Uh, when we got sent, sanctified, we stepped out of the boat. We took a step of faith saying, yes, if I follow God in consecrations, if I follow God in, in uh, the call that he has to a deeper walk, to experience his deeper love, God will touch me. And give me that experience of sanctification it will make my heart pure and holy, and we can live a life for him, dedicated for him. That's a step of faith, believing that his word is true, that his promise is for us. Yes. Likewise, when we seek for the baptism with the Holy Spirit, maybe uh, some of you are at this step. Maybe this, maybe this stepping out of the boat is the final step. Maybe that's the final step because you've done all the preparation work. Right, You're, you've been sanctified, seeking the Lord, consecrated, prepared, you know, and you have a desire, a strong desire to seek God. And then maybe, maybe there's a one more step that is a step out of the boat where Jesus is. Not where it's familiar and safe, but where Jesus is. And if we do that, God promises his victory, Amen. right? And, it's, and we thank God for that, that it's not... You know, this is not something human made. It's not something that we do. Yeah, we control. You know, I'm, I'm staying here in this boat because I can control the situation. It's somewhere where I'm familiar with. But no, Jesus says, step out of the boat. Beyond what you're familiar with. Beyond what you think you're safe. And that's where the victory is. Right? We talk about Peter because he stepped out of the boat. We don't talk about Andrew and the other ones who stayed in the boat. But we talk about Peter because he stepped out of the boat and believed God's promise. Maybe you're at that step and you're seeking for your deeper experience. Trust God and take that final step out of the boat and God will bless you. God will give you what you have need of. You know, it takes a lot of, it takes faith to step out of the boat as we talked about. And I want to read to you or tell you a little bit about an example uh, of somebody stepping out in faith believing and holding on to that faith for a long time. This is from our magazine, Apostolic Faith Magazine. I think this is from last year. It's a testimony of a, a lady. I don't think I ever met her. Uh, Gert, I apologize if I mispronounce her name. Gert Tolles or Tolles? Tolles. Gert Tolles, um, a mixer. Uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, she married Brother Steve Mixer's uh, dad, right? So she initially married somebody else, and he died as part of the story. And then after being widow for 15 years, it says she married uh, uh, Brother Steve Mixer's dad, and they served the Lord together till she uh, passed on in 2016. But it tells here the story how she was raised in the Christian family, but as she was young, she didn't, you know, she, uh, uh, she, she didn't pray enough, and she didn't keep this treasure in her heart, and she uh, slipped away from God. She backslid, and when she was 29... She finally went back to church, heard the message, and got saved at 29 with a young baby, gave the baby to her mother and went forward and prayed. And God answered her prayer and she got saved. But uh, her husband didn't get saved for many, many, many years, for 30 years actually, she said. She continued on you know, living uh, together with him in that family, uh, you know, with him being unsaved. She says it was a difficult at times because right, it had different, uh, different perspectives in the world, right? Uh, and he was busy always working and traveling and so on. But she kept praying for him for 30 years. It took 30 years of prayer for the Lord to answer that prayer for him to get saved. She does say that meanwhile, many, diff many miracles, as we heard tonight about God answering prayer and miracles, and many such answers to prayer uh, that God answered her, uh, you know, being sick, God healed her, uh, protecting her son. When he came home and the house was being burglarized, and all these things that had happened. You know, life happened, right? Storms are around us. But she has stepped out believing God. And she held on to God for all these years, 30 years. So eventually, just to make a story, her story a little shorter, she prayed for 30 years for her husband. And uh, one of his trips to Europe, it says he had a stroke. Uh, and it affected his language, but not his memory. So he remembered all those things that he, he had heard. And, you know, he died a year later, but not before being saved. And not only being saved, but it says from, you know, during that time when he had available, he would always get up and testify in his limited, limited speech that he had, telling how wonderful change the Lord had made in his life. After 30 years of praying, after 30 years of holding on, God answers prayer. 
Do you think she had to step out of the boat a few times during that time? Yes. She did have, you know, because, you know, it's such a long time before the answer came. But you know what? If we put our trust in God, he'll never let us down. He'll never leave us nor forsake me. Maybe you're here tonight because you need to step out of the boat. Maybe you've been too long in this familiar place that feels safe, feels good, feels nice. But to receive from God, sometimes we just have to step out of faith. Whatever that means to you, God will help you through it. He's right there and he says, come. Let's have a time of prayer. May the Lord answer your prayer tonight and give you the victory that you need. 581.